ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we are going to be looking at pulses. I hope you enjoyed that little small uh, intro at the very beginning of the video where yeah, you, if you want to uh, have a bit of a challenge, let's design something like that to uh, activate um, the drive going uh, forwards and then uh, send, being sent backwards by different types of pulses and those different types of pulses are PLS which is our trailing edge and PLF is going to be our falling edge and I will demonstrate and show live how are that uh, those two are uh, working and what is uh, the pretty much a difference between them it sort of explains you in the end the graph uh, what they do but I found it that it is easier and much more uh, effective to understand really how that works when you do the live test and I give you sort of a small example program so if you wish to try this is where you can try it on your own uh, training station to give you a bit of a feel for it what those uh, uh, signals do so basically these are a function so it has to be done uh, in a function block so this is exactly what we are going uh, to do so let's remove that one out. let's start up our GX works 2 uh, start a new project. Let's select our PLC and uh, so for the start of the program, let's do a our a uh, in feed uh, sensor, which is our X uh, zero, but it's a normally closed uh, signal. So we need to make sure we use a normally closed one, and uh, we're gonna say a X uh, zero. Thank you. And we are uh, uh, for the pulse. You need to use the F eight, which is a function block. And you have to say in the uh, PLS for the trailing edge, and we are going to say uh, what bit you want to to, to pulse. So we're going to say M zero. So once we uh, do that, so M zero will get pulsed. So then that M zero will a uh, do some action. So what is it going to do for a brief moment? It will send a, it will send on signal, and we're going to be using set uh, function for that set. Function we're going to say M A one. So we've done that. So for the set, for set function is done. So now M one needs to activate something, and in our case we are oh, we are going to be activating. So we're going to say M one. What's M going to one going to do? M one is going to activate Y zero, which run forward Y zero. Here we go. So that's uh, pretty much uh, where we're going to see the pulses. Uh, at the beginning of the, as soon as it hits the center, it will pulse straight away because it is falling edge, which again I'm going to dem demonstrate on a video in a minute. And it will set the M1 and activate Y0 to run forwards. So let's F4 that one. And uh, one more thing we're going to do, we need to turn it off somehow. So we're going to say our stop signal on the station is X4. So let's do that. And we are going to say again a function, we need to reset it. So we're going to say RST. Uh, we are going to set in M1, so we need to have a form of resetting, and uh, we are going to add another reset because we're going to reset the backwards as well. It's going to be M. I think it's going to be workout M3. So you can say M. Oh, R S uh, T M. Uh, let's say through. So on the same uh, the same thing uh, I am going to do with a uh, backwards. So for, for the back we're going to use X1 uh, which is our uh, uh, end of line sensor which is uh, what they call the uh, we're going to call the end of line sensor. So and again we're going to pulse something but this time we're going to be doing a falling edge. We're going to PLF and again what we're pulsing we're going to say M2. So once we uh, pulse um, uh, PLF M2 so uh, then that M2 M2 is going to set again something. Set the M3. As we already marked it up, M3 are going to need to be reset. So what does M3 does? It activates M3. It will activate uh, the drive to go backwards. So it's going to be a coil again, which is going to be a Y1. Try to use all your set and reset and, and basically functions. Don't use try not to use the uh, actual uh, coils which is wise and things like that the actual outputs because they tend to have a, a problem so do stay away from them to usually use internal auxiliary blocks for functions so uh, 
I haven't done that, so uh, this is pretty much the program we're going to be using. We're not going to be interlocking each other and things like that, so it's really only for uh, for demonstration purposes. And uh, in the end of the video, I'm going to show you exactly what you've seen in the beginning of the video. So uh, here we go. So uh, having done this, uh, let's uh, go online, write it to the PLC. Execute, thank you. There we go. Um, come on, there we go. Oh, we made a mistake, so uh, let's uh, fix that. I just heard my uh, little machine came on, and I'm pretty sure I know where I made a mistake. It's here, because my X0, X1 is uh, normally uh, normally closed, so we need to change that. So let's say uh, X1. There we go. So uh, I do that, and now let's send right to the PLC. There we go. So we fix that. Yep. Close. Close. And let's move the camera right in the middle. Expand it. Ooh. And let's move a bit more. So we can see more or less if the signal, how the signals are uh, switching. You're not going to be able to see the PLFs or PLSs to uh, 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 pulse because it happens so quick you don't see it. But you'll be able to see most likely the M1 and M0 or in this case M2. Actually, what we're going to do, we're going to narrow it down a little bit. Uh, options, uh, the ladder, diagram, editor, we're going to change that to 17 contacts. Yep, and that pretty much will uh, narrow it down so we can see a bit more, hopefully. So, uh, having done that, so let's go now to the station and really see how that really works. Right, the first thing what we're going to be trying out is our a trailing edge, which is this sensor in here. So uh, as we're going to do this sensor, let's have a look what happens. So as soon as we hit the sensor, oh, we need to put that in a run mode. Thank you. Boom, it starts going forwards. All right, as that's if you see, if you, I'm not sure if you could, you're not going to be able to see the actual pulse to do anything because it happens so quickly. So, but you might, might be able to see on the screen that the M1 coming on quickly. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that was M1. So uh, here we go. We try again. So as soon as we hit the sensor, that will uh, will pulse it, and we'll set our uh, Y0 to go forwards. So let's have a look what happens if you do with this sensor, which is on trailing uh, pulse. So if you go in front of the sensor, as you could see, nothing happens. So nothing really is going on down there because. It will be even if you go to this side. There we go. You see, it needs to leave the sensor. You turn that on. Leave needs it needs to leave the sensor to activate it. So pass it. So if you go pass it, and boom, and it goes and activates the the sensor. And that would be the falling edge pulse. And again, it only pulses for one cycle. And uh, if you want to pulse it again, you have to execute the the whole program again one more time so hopefully that has uh, sort of showed you in a real action what those uh, signals would do and so where would you do this use this kind of uh, uh, um, uh, functions anywhere pretty much so uh, I literally got nothing in my head coming up there where we could use it but you can if you've seen it in the beginning of the video there is a in there I was I was pulsing the drive to go forwards and I was pulsing to, to send the, dri uh, the, the drive backwards so again, for a basic uh, function like that, I use pulses uh, often when I program the belts up and and, and and other systems. Whatever pulses are very good if you don't want, if you want the if you if the signal uh, comes on and you most likely stays on for a brief brief uh, moment, and uh, you just want that to be in a brief on, so that will be perfect for it. And depend has like again very much depending on what sort of a function, uh, what sort of a application you're working on. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be it. And now uh, and uh, I will uh, quickly show you but uh, if you can uh, if you have some some station that you can build something like this I'll quickly show you the program that was running at the uh, very beginning of the video which should briefly uh, show you how that has been uh, done so here we got in a, a post program do you want to save brother no we don't want to change brother as you can see, this is what my program was looking for, for the start, and then and sort of give you a brief understanding of what that looks look like, what I have achieved. But most of the stuff in there we already have looked at in previous videos. So if you haven't seen it, do 
check it out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope I got the message across and made you understand what the uh, falling edge, uh, trailing edge, and falling edge pulses are. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at different kind of pulses, which are actually happening in the contacts in there, and we're going to see how they work is well so ladies and gentlemen if you like the video please smash that like if you don't press and dislike comment below what you like what you don't like and uh any questions do ask me and i will answer them as soon and as accurate as i can so other than that ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video